Oh, thank you, dear, dear, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you that you can heal all things, no matter what comes our way. While we're here living in this earth, living in these fleshly bodies, thank you, Lord, that you heal everything. Physically, spiritually, you heal everything, Lord. And one day, we will be where we won't need any healing because we'll be living with you in heaven in perfect health, in perfect spirit, living with you. We can't wait for that day, Lord. We can't wait for it. But thank you for being with us now, teaching us how to walk with you, how to be pleasing to your eyes, Father God. That's what we want. As your children, that's what we seek for. Be with us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the Lord's been showing us how to take care of our temples, his temple that's in our bodies. We've been talking about food and other things. Well, it's very important that we get enough sleep in these bodies. Amen? Amen. We need enough sleep. When we're not getting enough rest, it's hard to fully be alert to what God wants us to be because we're sleepy. Well, he wants us to be have a... Good night's sleep so we can wake up alert to everything he has for us that day. Amen? Amen. Exodus 20, verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now, do you really think the Lord needed rest on the seventh day? <laughs> no, he didn't need to rest. Because all he was doing was speaking the words. Yeah. He didn't have to do no physical work. All he had to do was speak the words and everything came into existence. Amen? Amen. So he wasn't tired. He was showing us that these bodies that he created needed rest. That's what he was doing. Amen? Amen. Now this goes with Hebrews chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. For all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors meaning work, just as God did after creating the world. So let us do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey God, as the people of Israel did, we will fall. If we disobey God on getting rest on these bodies, if we work seven days a week, we're going to fall with sickness. He, he says it right here. He says, I showed you when I created the heavens and the earth that I had a day of rest. But like I said, he, he didn't need the rest. He is doing that to show us that these bodies, his temple, need the rest. Amen? Praise Amen. God. And he's talking about spiritually also, not just physically. The Lord had a day of rest. He wants us to have a day of rest. If we don't obey him physically, we will get sick spiritually also. Because like I said, if, if, you, if you're not getting enough rest, are you very alert to what the Word of God says? It's kind of like, uh, I hate to say this, but sometimes I use the Bible as my sleeping pill. Because if I can't go to sleep, I'll start reading the Bible, and before you know it, I'm asleep. But that's a good way to go to sleep. Okay, amen, praise God. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't supposed to say that, but <laughs> I mean, I do, that's what I do. If I can't have, if I have a hard time going to sleep, I'll start reading the Bible again. After studying all day, then I'll read the Bible at night if I can't go to sleep, but that's okay. We need to believe and have faith in his word. We need to be very alert to his word. Can't get that if we're sleepy. We can't meditate on day and night being sleepy. We will be weak physically because we're not getting enough rest. And if we're weak physically, it'll make us weak spiritually also. They go together. All right? In Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 through 24, And Jesus went about all Galilee, 
teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. Amen. Amen. This was early in the part of Jesus' ministry when he was here. He was preaching to the people in the church and to some of the religious leaders. Some of them would listen to him. Some, most of them didn't, but some would listen to him. And they wanted to learn about the words of God through the Son of God. Amen? They wanted to learn. And because of him preaching about, I'm sure he, he preached about confessing and repenting of our sins, just like John did when he was here. He was telling the people, confess and repent of your sins. I'm sure that's what Jesus was doing also. But he also was preaching to them on why they were sick. Because he said it says he healed the sick and the ones with diseases. So I'm sure he was telling them, now this is why you're sick. Just like he's telling us today. He's telling us today, hey you guys, you're sick, this is why. You're eating clean that is not clean. It's unclean. And what that is today like I said, the food of God was good, but then the world came in and they started spraying it with all kinds of herbicides, pesticides, whatever. Uh, we're going to make it completely in grease, fried. I mean, we messed up God's food. We did. He made food clean for us to eat, but then we eat bad food because the way we make it now. Processed food, not good sh Sugar, well, fruit sugar is good, but candy, cakes, pies, no, that's a no-no. But he was telling them, this is why you're sick. This is what he was preaching to them, and they believed. Well, Jesse, how do you know they believed them? Because it's, they were healed. They were healed. you got to believe what the Lord says if you want to get healed through, through sickness or tribulation, whatever whatever it is, we need to believe them. And God will heal us. Amen? Praise God, he will heal us. That's a praise God. <laughs> I'm going to do praise God for y'all. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We listen to his words. And we don't have to worry about being sick. We don't have to worry about getting diseases. We don't have to worry about the coronavirus or COVID. We don't have to worry about that. I didn't. During the time of COVID, everybody was saying, well, it's not if you're going to get it, it's when are you going to get it. Well, that was for the world. That's what they thought. They were scared. They lived in fear. Not me. I can honestly say that. God said not to worry. Not to worry. I didn't worry. And he says, if I obey him, none of these diseases would come on me. Amen? I mean, I wore the mask where I had to. If to go see the doctor or something, for me to see him, I'd have to wear a mask. In some places, you had to wear a mask. Well, I didn't have no problem. I would do it, but it wasn't because I was not trying to get the coronavirus. It's because it's what the store or the doctor or whatever, that's what they wanted, and I'm not going to fight with them. I'll do it just for the few minutes I'm going to be in there. Amen? But I didn't do it to protect myself from diseases. I have the Lord Jesus Christ to protect me from those diseases. He said it. I even did a teaching on Psalms 91 where he says we don't have, that this is going to happen, that thousands were going to be dying from diseases. But he said, not us. Amen? We need to believe it. We need to believe it. When we read that, when I taught it, we need to believe it. Just like right here, it says, and he healed them. Why? Because they believed them. Hey, you guys, this is why you're getting sick. And he healed them. And he healed them because they believed what he said. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Verse 24. Then his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments. And those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, paralytics. And he healed them. I don't know if I pronounce those words right. I'm not a doctor. We read this verse because I want us to know that those that are demon possessed, they do have people who are demon possessed now. 
It still goes on just like back then. It still happens today. I've told you before, these kids, these babies, these men or women are killing babies. That's the devil. That is the devil. They're possessed by the devil to do those things. So the devil does still possess people today. But praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Devil can't be where the Holy Spirit is. Amen. So if we got the Holy Spirit living in us, the Spirit of God living in us, there's no way the devil can possess us. Amen. amen. That's, a, that's amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The devil cannot possess. He can still possess lost people, but not us. That's good news. Amen. Praise amen. God. And we just need to believe in him. We just need to believe in him. God said, you be my people and believe, and I'll be your God. He made it pretty simple, huh? And these, all these promises, all these commands, well, Jesse, some of them are hard. Uh, they're only hard because you're, not, because you're walking in the flesh. If we're walking in spirit, none of his commands are hard. They're not hard if you're walking in the spirit. Amen? Amen. Praise God. He wants us to be healthy. Proverbs 4, verse 20, 23. My son, attend, attend, pay attention, attend to my words. Amen? Amen. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Amen? Amen? For they are life. When the Lord says, I am the life, and we receive him, and we get, this is what he's saying. He is the life. And when we accept him as Lord, we're alive now because we were dead. The scripture said we were dead. Until you find Jesus, put him in your heart, we're dead. But now we have life. Amen. For they are life unto those that find them. And listen to this, his words, his words, and health to all their flesh. Amen. Amen. Walking with the Lord, believing his words, health to all their flesh, to all our body is health. Amen? And health means what? You're not sick. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life, meaning how we live. How we live by the word of God. Do we obey or we disobey? Amen? Obeying and listening to the words of God, we will. We will have good health. This is such a great promise from the Lord but very few of us pay attention to it the eyes the eyes he's saying the eyes we need these eyes to study his words to read his words amen we need them we do anything that hurts our eyes that's not good that's not good we need his words we need to be wholeheartedly into his words on what he says, on what he says. We've got to quit listening to the world, quit listening to the, what's on TV, quit listening to what's on the radio, quit listening to these people who, these leaders. They're not giving you advice. They're, not, they're, they're liars. They're lying to us, most of them. So we need these eyes to read his word to get the truth. The truth, Amen. His word is life. Proverbs 3, verse 7 and 8. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Huh? Hey, you guys. God said, hey, you think you're smarter than me? Huh? He said, instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. That's good wisdom. That's good advice from the Lord. For some reason, we think our wisdom is better or greater than God. There's some people out there who think that way, believe it or not. And where do you think that's coming from? They need to repent from that. God is the wisdom I need. I need God's wisdom, not my wisdom, because my wisdom, fleshly wisdom, it comes from the devil. Right. Anything that's not of God is from the devil. Hope you all understood that. <laughs> Believing and trusting in the Lord Draws us closer to him. 
Amen? Draws us closer to him and further away from the devil. Oh, praise God. Uh, I don't want the devil to mess with me. I'm getting tired of him tempting me. Okay, we'll get closer to the Lord. Huh? Did God make it easy or what? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Verse 8. Then you will have healing for your body, amen, and strength for your bones. This is coming from the Lord. Put God's wisdom first. And all he has shown us, all he has shown us, especially about eating, because like I said, eating is a big, big factor on the way the devil works on us. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, eating is one of them. Oh, that looks good. That fried, and I love fried chicken. I hardly ever eat it. Hardly ever eat it. But I look at it and I'm like, ooh, that looks good. The lust of the flesh. Do y'all understand? Yeah. The lust of the flesh. He, he promises that we'll not get sick. Praise God. We will not get sick. And we will live longer. Hey? Amen. Who doesn't want to live longer? I, well, I want to live longer with a healthy body. Yeah. I don't want to live longer in an old folks' home or having to have my daughters take care of me. Uh, I don't want it. That, I don't want to live that way. I want to live longer with a healthy body. Amen. Amen. And that's what He promises us. Praise God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. When we see. We don't have the wisdom of God. He says in James 1, 5, But if any of you lack wisdom, you should pray to God, who will give it to you. Amen. If you lack it, pray to the Lord. He'll give it to us. Because God gives generously and graciously to all. Amen. Amen. The Lord says, if you lack wisdom. I don't know why he put the word if in there, because we lack wisdom. His wisdom. Okay? We lack his wisdom. That's why we should always be praying and learning from his word. And he will answer. He will answer. Like I said, people pray to the Lord. When you're praying in his will, he's going to answer us. He's going to answer us. Praise God. When we don't take care of our mind, our bodies, this is the kind of life we're going to live. When we don't do it the Lord's way. John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And I, I am come that they might have life. What did Jesus, this is Jesus saying this. The devil, this is what he wants for you. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and destroy. Us. That's what the devil is here for. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. Amen. Amen? Life. And that you might have it more abundantly. Amen? Amen. And part of this means that you will not get sick and live longer. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Praise God. The devil wants us sick. Right. So those of us who think, well, you know, I like this. I'm going to keep eating it. Okay, well, go ahead. Because the devil wants to steal and kill and destroy you. Right. And when you don't listen to him, that's what's happening. Right? The devil wants us to live, the devil wants us to live a sickly life. The devil does, not the Lord. The devil wants us to be sickly with no evil pleasures to destroy us. But the Lord wants us to be full of life, which is Jesus. Amen? Amen. It's Jesus. He wants us to have evil pleasure, evil pleasure, getting drunk all the time. Where it eventually kills us. That's what the devil wants. The Lord doesn't want this. He wants us to be full of life. Full of life. That's why he's telling us this. Hey you guys. I want you to be full of life. I want you to live long. Without sickness. I am your life. And what is Jesus? Full of joy and happiness. Amen. That's what he wants for us. Obey the Lord. And he also says in Proverbs 3 verses 1 and 2. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. Let your what? Heart. Our hearts. Did he say our minds? No. Our minds are weak. 
our heart is strong. That's where our treasures are, right? right? Is in our heart. For the length of days and long life I, and peace will add to you. If we live this way, keep our heart, his commands from our heart, peace and long life will be added to you. How much more does the Lord have to say? How much more does he have to say for us to obey him? I love fried chicken, but I like, I, I want to live long and healthy. I love bacon, but I want to live long and healthy for the Lord. I already told Jody, look, if I ever get Alzheimer's or we're dementia, whatever it is that I, I, I don't know the Lord anymore, anymore, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. There ain't no reason for me to be here anymore. There is no, I live for Jesus, period. That's what I'm here for, is to live for Jesus and to tell others about the Lord. That's my goal in life. That's what I live for. So if I can't do that anymore, if I, if I don't remember anything, then I'm not going to remember to get a gun and just blow my brains out. Knowing that I can't live for him anymore. Yeah. I have no purpose in life if I cannot talk, speak about Jesus. Amen? Because that is my life. That is my life. Proverbs 9, verse 10 and 11. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. The fear of the Lord, the respect. A lot of times the word fear means respect. The respect of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen? And the knowledge of of the Holy One is understanding. When he's preaching his words up here, he's giving us the scriptures to explain the scriptures. He's making it easy for us to understand what he's saying. Amen? In verse 11, for by me your days will be multiplied. <laughs> he tells us again. We take his knowledge, we take his wisdom, and our days will be multiplied. We're going to live longer. And years of life will be added to you. Praise God. Praise God. Who does not want this kind of life? Yeah. Really? I'm serious. Obeying the Lord is life. Let me just say that. Obeying God is life. We want life. That's life. Obeying the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Psalms 413. So real. This is so real. I mean, not Psalms, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Right. Who gives me the strength to turn down the bacon? Who gives me the strength to turn down the fried chicken <clears throat> and other things? And mainly, like I said, food. But who gave me the strength to give up cigarette smoking? Who gave me the strength to, to get away from alcohol? Who gave me that strength? Right. Jesus did. So if there's anything out there that you're weak at, that you find a hard time turning it away, I can do all, all, all of it. I can do all things through Christ, through Christ. Did he say through uh, AA? No, he didn't say through AA for alcoholics. He said Christ. That's where I took my alcohol problem to the Lord. I didn't take it to AA. Because if I would have taken it to AA, Today, I'd have to stand before y'all and say, hello, my name's Jesse, I'm an alcoholic. Praise God, I don't have to do that. Praise God, but that's what AA does. Being a Christian, praise God, he freed me from alcoholism. Amen? Praise God. He's the one who strengthened me. Through all things, all things, he gave me the strength. My little girl, my little girl going to heaven, my first little precious little girl, he gave me the strength to go through that. Amen? Believe what the Lord says right here. I can do, he's speaking to us. We can do all things through Christ, through Jesus, who strengthens me. Right. Praise God. Now remember this, Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified. I have been crucified. We kill the way we want to live and live for him. Right. I have been crucified. With Christ, it is no longer, no longer I who live. We don't live the way we want anymore. Okay, amen? 
but Christ lives in me and the life which I, I now sorry and the life which I now live in the flesh meaning this bodies I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me we all know we all know what that means he, yeah. he suffered and died on the cross for us yeah. for us why if you think nobody loves you, Jesus loves you. Yeah. Jesus loves you. He loves us so much that he suffered and died on the cross for us. So we could have life. What kind of life? Sickly life? No. He's telling us, I, I want to give you life that, is, that you'll live longer and you won't get sick. Yeah. I died on the cross for that. I didn't die on the cross for you to be sick all the time. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Many, many Christians haven't heard a sermon like this. They don't teach this in, or preach this in the church. <laughs> How can I say that? Because I've been to churches. And when churches have fellowship, what do they eat? Some people bring fried chicken. Some people bring other stuff that's not good for us. So they don't know this. They've never heard a sermon like this. But praise God, praise God. He gave it to me and I'm giving it to you. Yeah. I don't hold anything. What the Lord gives me, you're going to get it. And this is why this church is so small. This is why it's small. Because people can't handle the truth. Right. Listen, we have been blessed. We need to get on our knees and thank Jesus that he has shown us this. Amen. Thank Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you have shown me I don't have to worry about getting sick. You have shown me how I don't have to worry about diseases out there. And there's going to be more. Don't think Corona is the last of it. COVID was not the last of it. They even Right now, they're even talking about the mosquitoes that are bringing stuff over here. So you haven't heard the last of it. But as long as we're walking with the Lord, obeying, don't have to worry about those diseases. That's what he said. That's not what Jesse said. That's what he said. You don't have to worry about these diseases. And those of you who need more than that, I did a teaching. It's called, it's on Psalms 91. I think that's the, the title, Psalms 91. But seriously, and we don't have to do it now, but when you get home or, or whenever you're by yourself, fall on our knees. Fall on our knees and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now, if I get sick and I don't live long, that's going to be my fault. Right? Because he said this is how you can do it. But if we don't do it, well, we're, not, we're going to get sick and we're not going to live long. Strokes and heart attacks. That's from food. Stress. And what did the Lord say? Don't worry about tomorrow. But people, Christians worry about tomorrow. Stress. So we don't live God's way. We're not going to live long. Yeah. Isaiah 8.20 To the law and to the testimony, meaning the words of God, if they do not speak according to this word, the Bible, it is because there is no light in them. So he's speaking to y'all about me. If what I'm preaching to y'all it's not the word of God. It's no good. Okay? That's what he's saying. It's no good. If I'm speaking corrupt words or giving you my opinion, giving you my interpretation, it's no good. Then there's no light in me. If this is the way I'm doing it. But a lot of preachers today, this is what they're doing. They're giving their opinion. They're giving their interpretations of the word of God. Not me. Unless... I know that I know that I know this is what is what God is saying. I won't say it. I got to know without a doubt. The Spirit's got to show me, yes, that's what it means. Them verses, that's what it means. I'm not saying I'm a perfect preacher. I'm still a man. And, and there, have, there have been times when I preached one way on a verse and found out later, oh, I took that wrong. But I've made it corrected with y'all. I'll come back and I say, look, what I said back then, I made a mistake. So I, I make mistakes. But then that's why you have the scriptures in your, in your hands right there. Check out the scriptures that I've read. 
And you, you can come to me and say, Jesse, right here in this verse you said, but I believe it means, and we'll sit down and we'll look at it. I've done that with a brother. He's told me uh, of a verse, and he says, well, Jesse, it doesn't quite mean that. And so we sat down, we looked at it, studied it, looked before it, studied below it. I said, you know what, you're right. So I'm not perfect, but no, it, no preacher is, Okay. This is what I do with the words of God. Jeremiah 15, 16. Your words were found. This is me when I found the words of the Lord. Your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Amen. That's what God's words are to me. And I, I pray that's what God's words are to y'all. That there are joy of rejoicing in our heart. His words, amen? For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. That's how I receive the words of God. That's how I receive the words of God. Again, I hope it's the same with y'all. These are not just words from a book. These are the words of God. And the bottom line, are we obeying them? Are we obeying? That's the bottom line. Are we obeying God's words in everything? In everything. All he has given us in this church. He's given us a, a lot of knowledge in this church. He's, he's given it to me, and then I give it to you. But he's given me a lot of knowledge. Amen? Being fruitful is waking up every morning. And praying to him, Lord, what's your will for me today? How many times have I said that to y'all? Wake up in the morning and say, Lord, what is your will for me today? How can I please you today? Amen. Amen. The Lord wants us to wake up with him. Yes. Praise God. Waking up in the morning and praying to him. Proverbs eight seventeen. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Amen? Early. Most of us work, wake up early in the morning. I'm retired. I don't wake up too early in the morning. But I do wake up early in the morning. And I love them that love me and those that seek me. Lord, show me your will today. Amen? Is that what we do? No raising hands or anything. But is that what we do? Is that the way we wake up? Praise God. Praise God. I love you. I, you saw me through the night. I woke up this morning. There's some people who don't wake up. They die in their sleep. There's some people who don't wake up because a thief comes in and, and they could be killed. So we got to praise them in the morning. Praise God. Because I do. In the mornings I pray. Every, I, every morning I say, thank you, Lord, for watching over us through the night. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. The Lord has told us many times to meditate on him day and night, right? To day, meditate on him day and night. And when we do this, what are we meditating on? We're meditating on his word. Yes. That's what we're meditating on. Remembering what he has shown us, what he has taught us. Amen? That's what we meditate on. Not ourselves. We don't meditate on ourselves. We meditate on him and his words. Amen? And I, believe me, I'm not bragging here, but that's what I, that's how I live. I'm always meditating on the words of God, meditating on the Lord and how good he is to me. Thanking him for everything he's given me, not just material wise, health, taking care of my, my kids, my grandkids, my brothers, my sisters. I pray, I thank him. Lord, I didn't get no phone call today. That something happened to my sister or my brother or any of my family. I didn't get that. I didn't get no phone call. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That's the way we live. That's the way we meditate on Him day and night. Praise God. Praise God. Proverbs twenty-three, verse seven. For as He thinks in His heart. So is he. Where is our heart? Is our heart on the Lord? Is our heart on the Lord? 
For as he thinks in his heart, whatever you're thinking about that day, that's what's on your heart. But he says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So whatever you're thinking, that's who you are. If you're a football, uh, a, a big football fan, and all you're thinking about is your football team, well, that's where your heart is. Your heart's on that football team, baseball, whatever it is. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? When our heart's not directly meditating on the Lord God Almighty, on anything else, it's no good. Because whatever it is, it don't matter what it is, whatever it is, it's not going to see you through the hard times. Not like the Word of God. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Remember what our Lord has told us in Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Amen? Amen. With us, it's impossible. <clears throat> oh, Lord, I, man, I can't stay away from that food, or I can't stay away from that alcohol, or I can't stay away from the drugs, or I can't uh, stay away from, believe it or not, I can't stay away from my family, whether it be brothers, sisters, mama, daddy, grandma, grandpa, nephews, grandkids. Uh, I, I can't stay away from them. I'm with them more than I'm with you. Did y'all hear that? I'm with them. And I love all that. I, I love my family. But I'm telling you, people, Jesus comes first. Jesus comes first. And the only way I can put them first is by putting them first. Amen? Amen? It's not that I don't love my family. I love my family to death. I'll do anything for them. But Jesus comes first. Amen? Amen. But with God, all things are possible. Amen? All things. He didn't say something. The Lord said all things Please remember that word all, all things. Well, no matter what comes your way, hey, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We need to remember that verse. We need to keep it deep into our heart and believe it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Because of the times we're in now, the Lord has shown us many scriptures, many scriptures shown us we're in the last days. He's given us sermons on it. We're in the last days. I know some of us are going to find it hard to give up food we eat. But guess what? It's only for a little while. Yeah. Jesus is coming. Yeah. It's only for a little while. Amen? Amen? It's not like, oh, I'm going to live to be 100 years old, and for 100 years I can't eat that. <laughs> no, Jesus is coming. <clears throat> so what he's asking us to do, okay, I can do that. Because I know you're coming. So it's just going to be for a little while. Because we've had sermons. He's shown us he's coming. Yeah. He's at the door. And he's about to come in. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I don't, hey, I should have heard some hallelujahs. Praise God something on that. Jesus is coming. He's right there. Amen. Amen. There, there's some verses I haven't given you to see on he's coming. Acts chapter 2, verses 17 through 21. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And my man servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit. In those days, and they shall prophesy. This is going to happen in the last days. He said it several times. This is what's going to happen in the last days. And it's happening. In the Old Testament, only certain people were filled with the Spirit. The Spirit came upon them in the Old Testament. Now the Spirit comes on us. Amen? Comes in us. And he, he just said that's going to happen in the last days. This, my spirit is not just going to come upon you like it in the Old Testament. No, I'm going to put my spirit in you. Amen. 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 It's happening. Amen. Now under the new covenant, Amen. the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is for, our, for all the believers. Oh, praise God. Praise God that you, those who call on his name. Right. 
Those who call calling on his name, meaning you're living for him. Amen. Amen. You're living for him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Verse 19, I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Don't worry about all this that's going to happen. Because whoever calls on the name, whoever gives their heart, their life to the Lord, we're going to be saved. Amen. 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 Praise God. Oh, hey, this is coming. Yeah. Praise God. All these things are frightening. They can scare you. And they're going to happen right before he comes. But we, the Christians, do not have to be afraid. I've told you before, how many times did he tell us in the Bible not to be afraid? Fear not. 365 times he said that in the Bible. How many days in a year? So every day, go without being afraid. Amen? That's what the Lord is telling us. Go every day without being afraid. For one thing, if we're walking with him, amen, if we're walking with him, we don't have to be afraid. He, he goes before us. He directs our path, right? We follow his footsteps, and his footstep doesn't lead us to, to fear. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Just obey his, his words. Amen? Now, y'all probably thought I was never going to get to this, but in closing, <laughs> in closing, I'm going to close with this promise from the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 29. Oh, he says, oh. Well, what's he say, oh? Well, that means, oh, oh. They that had such a heart in them that they would fear, respect me, and always keep on my commandments that it might be well with them and with their children forever. As long as I am walking and obeying God, my children, my, what does he say? It will be well with them. Amen? Amen? I want things to be good with my kids and my grandkids. The Lord said it right here. Walk with him. Walk with him and it will, and it will, it will go on down from your children and your grandchildren. Amen? Amen. Now, come on. Okay. Well, Fried chicken and bacon, yeah, that's hard. But if I obey him, my children are going to be blessed. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Think about your children. Think about your children and not your stomach. The Lord said, all his commandments, all his commandments. We can eat his words like we eat food. That's what he said. Jeremiah, I found his words and I ate them. Amen? We can't eat food. We can't eat the word of God like we eat food. Oh, I don't like onions. Or I don't like bell peppers. Or whatever it may be. I don't like that. I'm not going to eat that. You can't do that with the word of God. We can't eat physical food the same way we eat the food from the word of God. All of the word of God is good for us. And we're going to like all of it. All of it. We can't say, well, I don't like that verse. No, we can't say that. We, he says to follow all his commandments. Amen? Amen. We keep all his commandments. And like I said last week, this, this teaching, this preaching, these words of God, will show us. He already knows, but it will show us how far we're going to go with him. Right? Am I going to follow him all the way or just on some things? Like I said last week, he don't want some things. He wants all of us or none of us. Amen? Amen. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you. We praise you from our heart. 
thank you for showing showing how we can go without sickness, showing how we can live long. These are blessings, Lord. These are promises from you. And if we obey them, oh, praise God. Praise God. Lord, all your words, all your words are good for us, all of them. And even though some of them might sound, well, that's kind of hard. Well, it's not hard. As long as our eyes are on you, as long as we're walking with you, as long as we're obeying the spirit that is in us, which is you, your words, as long as we do that, do that, Lord, we can live a joyful life, a life of rejoicing, a life of happiness, because that's the life you want for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we are your temple, that we're your temple, Lord. Thank you, Father. You're so good to us. You're so good to us. Thank you, Father. Just be with now. Be with us now. Let us meditate on everything you have taught us, everything you have, all the words that you have spoke to us on this sermon here. Let us meditate on it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.